time for Live Now with Dr. Carmen Hara. The show offers profound wisdom, practical advice, daily exercises, and empowering predictions. And now, here's Dr. Carmen Hara. Hello, everybody. So excited to be with you. And uh, today, we're going to talk about relationships. And I have an amazing guest. I have Dr. Dupree with me. Um, And I'm going to introduce him in a second. I just want to tell you that as our world evolves, so do we. Human relationships are becoming more complex than ever. So we all need a bit of help navigating through them successfully. So men and women are advancing past soulmate relationship and seeking soulmate relationship. But this new freedom does not come without new challenges. So what do we do when our partner is emotionally cold and distant? How should we handle mixed signals? When is the right time to open up to your love interest about your feelings? We have to learn how to overcome obstacles in love and make your significant other more attached and more interested in you and more attracted to you. So for that reason, I said, there's one authority in this field that I'm always thrilled and honored to invite on my show. And that's no one else than Dr. John Gray. And as you guys know very well, Dr. John Gray wrote a book that was um, considered uh, probably the 10 most influential book of the last quarter century. This book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, uh, was translated in 45 languages and was appearing in uh, 100 languages, sold 45 million books. You can imagine, or even more, I think 50 million books. And after that, Dr. Gray didn't stop here and he published another 20 books. And his last book, more recent book is called Beyond Mars and Venus. He helped men and women better understand and respect the differences in both personal and professional relationships. I can talk about Dr. Gray forever because everybody talks about Dr. Gray and will continue to talk about Dr. Gray because his legacy will go forever. Uh, He was on Oprah, Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, CBS this morning, Good Morning America, you name it. Uh, He is um, somebody who not only you know, talks about your relationship, but he gives you a lot of advice about your own health and and, and has so much to say every time he's invited on a show. And he also has a gift for all of us, uh, for everybody listening to the show tonight. And I'll tell you much more about his gift. But I, like any time I invite Dr. Gray, I would love to let you know that I dedicate the show to his beautiful an amazing wife, Bonnie, because the way Dr. Gray loved his wife is amazing, is unique, and is unparalleled, and is so moving and so touching. So, Dr. Gray, I'm so grateful to have you with me on my show today, and um, I am I am honored to have you with me. So, thank you for the opportunity. Well, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So you, as you know very well, you know, uh, I always have a million questions for you. And I'm scared, and I also have a lot of people excited, excited to not only listen to you, but some of them I would love to ask you questions. I'm going to start with um, one question because, you know, Valentine is coming and, uh, you know, everybody wants to know uh, what are the signs that somebody is interested in me? So, okay. Here I am, you know, I, I, I just met somebody. How do I know that that person likes me? What do you think? Well, the challenge here is that men today are more shy uh, than they used to be. This is a biological factor because uh, a man's testosterone level gives him the motivation to meet a woman he's interested in. And the testosterone levels in males today are 20% lower than they were just 20 years ago. So they've been feminized a lot by our culture. And that's a whole subject I write about in my book, Beyond Mars and Venus. The traditional roles have changed. And so men are not like they used to be. And and women have to, in a sense, in in a delicate way, pursue the man she's interested in. But, But you must be careful if you're a woman 
not to be following your attraction feelings if you're uh, experiencing sexual attraction to a man. Usually that leads down the wrong road. For women, it needs to start in the mind uh, where you're feeling an interest, a respect, a curiosity, the ability to have conversations where increase your feeling of uh, appreciation for him, admiration for the quality of person he is. That's very important for women. So many women today just follow their physical attraction and the man never calls back because you need to be seen and heard. And then gradually you start to feel safe and open your heart and share your thoughts and feelings. And he does things for you that you appreciate. That's, in a sense, men earning their way into your life. That's very important that you be patient in that way. But because men are so sensitive these days, they're afraid to approach if they're more interested in you. And that's a key factor for women to know. You ideally date the men that are more interested in you than you're interested in them. Then you don't fall into traps of giving too much and, and trying to please him too much. But giving him the opportunity to please you is the way a man bonds with you. And for men, when you're when you're drawn to a woman and you feel that physical chemistry, uh, ideally don't rush into the, the the physical act until you get to know her and your heart is open and you still have that interest. Then you're insured of a more lasting relationship. Uh, and 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 just take the risk. You know we have to keep. It's a numbers game, men. You just have to show interest. But if you're just if you're just interested in having a physical re- relationship. Uh, usually, if you're a more open-hearted man, you'll feel too afraid to approach because you feel shame for just wanting sex. When the truth is, you want relationship, but sex is a part of that. And be patient around that and get to know her. Now, you mentioned your last book, and I want to ask you much more about what inspired you, you know, because you continue the series. But what inspired you to write your, your latest book, Beyond Mars and Venus? Well, it's very, very important because while men are from Mars, women are from Venus, it still shows up and helps people to understand their differences when they're in a intimate relationship. And now, particularly when you have children, if you have children, right. those those uh, issues, but they, they show up. But the world in general has gone beyond the traditional male-female role as man providing for woman, woman needing man for financial support and security. Right. Once women are more independent, the dynamic between men and women changes. And right. the women become less attractive to men. That's one thing that happens because men are attracted to feminine energy. Uh, and mm-hmm. this is biological. It's not just my theory, but I'm, it's, you know, you don't find it on Google so easily. It's not yet common knowledge, but you can find very easily that for, for women to be happy and fulfilled, their estrogen levels need to be 10 to 20 times higher than a man's. And for a man to be attractive to a woman, his testosterone levels need to be 10 to 20 times higher than a woman. These are biological realities. And as women are in the workplace so much of the time, it lowers their estrogen level and raises their testosterone. And they experience symptoms like feeling overwhelmed, feeling stressed, feeling picky, not being able to appreciate the men that are interested in her. So we want to find ways to balance the hormones inside. And men lose interest their ability to commit and pursue a relationship over time when their testosterone levels are low. They lose interest very quickly. So what do we do for that? Well, we understand a new way of communicating so that the the relationship itself promotes more estrogen in women and more testosterone in men. And that's why I wrote this book. It's very lengthy. It shows how women's hormones are different than men's and what we can do at different times of the month to promote the ideal hormonal balance. So actually, the book helps people understand how balancing hormones indirectly balance the relationship in itself. Am I correct? Exactly, and vice versa. The actual relationship skills that you employ, which are new, and I'll give a few examples of them, uh, those relationship skills can actually balance your hormones. So many women now are taking hormones, right. are feeling their hormones are out of balance, and that's one, one path. But what you want is a relationship that promotes the right balance. And then in most cases, you don't need to take hormones. So, so here's most, an example. You know, here's a lot a, of women do take hormones. That That's like a like an epidemic, <laughs> a pandemic of taking hormones. Yeah, and it's absolutely. And it's not recommended. You know, right. most of my friends who are doctors who give out hormones. They say if there's anything you can do to balance it on your own, that's ideal. And that's what I do. Nobody has yet written a book on how you balance your hormones uh, through relationship skills. Here's an example. If a woman 
is on a, is on a date. If we're talking about single women on dates. Uh, what what oh. happens is allowing him to pay for the meal is going to increase your estrogen. Allowing him to open oh. your door. Allowing him to plan the date. Letting him know three things you'd like to do and he should pick. Uh, that mm-hmm. ensures he'll feel successful, but that will increase his testosterone. Focus on the date, on what works well, as opposed to sharing what you don't like. Uh, it's very important to give men positive encouragement like appreciation, acceptance, and trust uh, in order to bump up his testosterone. And for women, men show her interest in what she says, what she feels, what she thinks, what she wishes and wants. When women feel heard, understood, respected, and cared for, all those behaviors allow her to relax and depend on you to feel good. See, women want to, instead of trying to make a man feel good, it's shifting it around. The traditional roles where men would come home from a hard day at work and women would focus on trying to make him feel good. But today, men, men need boosting testosterone. And so what women, because it's going down, I told you, it's a dramatic drop. Uh, the, the passion, the interest, it's so fleeting in relationships. But with these skills, like on a date, women don't ask him a lot of questions. Just ask him a question. Women typically will ask questions like interviewers. Ask a question just to get him to say something, and then you give him a positive message like that makes sense. That's a good idea or what else. You know, th- these are, these are uh, you're right. Any of those messages boost testosterone. And you only give those messages if it's true. Uh, certainly if he doesn't make sense, you don't want to date him. If he's not interesting, you don't want to date him. You know, so, but that's pumping testosterone. What he needs to do, and he doesn't know, is ask questions. Well, how, help me understand that better. What do you do? What do you do? Well, tell me more about that. And what else? Get women to talk more. And what women have to know is she needs to talk maybe three to five times more than a man. And women all think, oh, men don't want women to talk. Well, that's because women, when they talk, they don't really reveal quite often a deeper sense of things that she'd be embarrassed to share with other people. But when you can open up like that, you experience a deeper level of intimacy. And these are all new skills. You know, it's, it's women on dates, typically your mother told you, if you want a man to be interested in you, be interested in him. And I contradict that. I basically say, if you want a man to be interested in you, don't ask so many questions, share more, talk more so he can find out if he's interested in you. And actually when somebody's listening to you, and if the more vulnerable you become when you share, the higher your estrogen levels will go. So sharing, that's why women go to therapists. 90% of the people that go to therapists are women because it will produce their estrogen that will lower her stress and they'll make her feel good. <laughs> what about the drop in the dopamine and serotonin in time between two people who spend a lot of time together? Does that well, yeah, influence the-, the attraction, the chemistry? Oh, massively, massively. That's why it's hopeless today unless people understand what I teach. Uh, the, the passion that you feel in the beginning is the newness, the challenge. Yes. Uh, any, you know, once you, once you get in a relationship, and that stimulates dopamine, by the way. And when you yes. feel safe and you're ex- experiencing dopamine, if you're a woman, your estrogen levels soar very, very high without any skills. And for a man, your testosterone levels, new and different, stimulates dopamine, and that raises testosterone in men, and that creates the chemistry, the attraction. Now, as soon as familiarity sets in, uh, routine sets in, serotonin, which means, you know, when you feel comfortable and at ease in a situation, no challenge, no danger, uh, serotonin gets produced. So you feel comfortable, but there's no passion, so you end the relationship. You move on thinking, if I find the right person, (laughs) the passion will last. Well, that's nonsense. (laughs) What will happen, what makes the passion last primarily is assuming you have recently good communication, a communication that that supports polarity, meaning she is way more feminine than him and he's way more masculine than her. It's when his testosterone goes up in her presence, he will feel attraction to her. So there's ways to communicate so that you're pumping up a man's testosterone all the time. And he's pumping up her estrogen all the time. And in a, in a funny way, you can actually measure that physiologically as well. When a woman's estrogen goes up, she produces this smell, pheromones. These are studies. Right. And, and the pheromones a woman produces at high estrogen actually raises a man's testosterone and makes him more interested in her. <laughs> Very amazing. And when a man's testosterone <laughs> is high, he puts out pheromones that a woman's body picks up. 
and becomes mm-hmm. higher estrogen and more interest in, in him. It's so mm-hmm. biological. It's amazing. Right. It's all biology. But um, um, it's fascinating how you also teach that nowadays, you know, women are looking also to their masculine side and male are also searching their feminine side more than before. Is that correct? Yes. Well, see, that started that started about uh, back in the 60s. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, for example, as a young man, uh, grew out my hair like a woman and had fancy right. boots and, and demonstrated for peace and uh, loved the music of do what you like, do what you like. That became the mantra of, of the young right. men at that time. They're going to their female side. Whenever you're doing what you like and what you love and what's fun, estrogen levels get produced. Whenever you're doing serious things, things you have to do to produce results, that produces testosterone. So basically what we want is a balance in our lives of being responsible, solving problems, making money, but also loving it and enjoying it. Uh, I'm fortunate having mastered this after many years of teaching it. Whether all I work every day, I work a lot, but I have a fun time. I enjoy it. I love it. And I love my family and I create balance and my children. I'm a grandfather. I'm 70 years old. And ironically, because I have that balance and I have a good relationship, what happens is my testosterone levels have not gone down. They've only continued to go up at 70 years old. They're 50% higher than when I was a young man. See, this is the way wow. we're designed to be if we have good relationship skills. And so the women in the 60s all joined feminism and they started, you know, we need to make more money and run the world. And that's all good. We, we need a balance of men and women running the world. We need corporations run by men and women. But we need not be so overly stressed out about making money. And when a woman is on the male side, it's easy for her to get stressed out and overwhelmed and not be able to relax because she hasn't, you know, she hasn't learned how to be very masculine and feminine at the same time. That's the integration. So every day, if you go to work, there's going to be stress. You need to make sure when you come home from work, that's called work-life balance, that you have a life that promotes a lot of estrogen production. And then you start to integrate the two. Exactly, exactly. Dr. Gray, do you mind if we take a call or somebody? There are a lot of people trying to, to say hello to you. Uh, that's that's that great. Okay? I look, okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay. We're going to talk to Domingas. Hi, Domingas. Can you hear us? Yes, yes. Absolutely. So, Domingas, you have uh, the privilege to talk to Dr. Gray today. I know. You have thank questions you. to Dr. Gray. Yeah, thank you. Um, go ahead. It's about relationship, right? Uh, yes, go ahead. Of course. So what is your question to Dr. Gray? Yeah, my question is because uh, you already know I'm uh, divorced. Uh, it has been for the past five years. Although we have two kids, but I, my relationship with my ex-husband is almost like as if we were enemy. I was wondering, like, uh, but I don't want it to be that way. How can I break that, that, that uh, bad energy, even though I'm... I'm striving for higher vibration to unconditional love but because my husband is, is not in that level. So, it, but it still holding me back. How okay, I- okay, okay, okay. Let me give you some answers here. It's very important. You're, you're single now for five years. You need to primarily uh, focus on finding a new man in your life. It's very important for your children to see that your mother is uh, has a positive experience with the opposite sex. This is very important today. Because of so many unhappy divorces, uh, boys' testosterone levels are even lower, and many times they become gay. Uh, for girls, they don't want to be in relationships because they have no positive role model of a man loving their mother. So ha- a mother's responsibility is to find a man that she can love and appreciate and talk well of. That's the first step. Uh, so you need to be fulfilled within yourself. You need to find fulfillment through a man. And this is challenging for women because when they go through a painful divorce, they stop trusting themselves. It looks like they're not trusting men, and so they don't get in a relationship. But actually, when you get married, you think, oh, I found the one. And then how can you trust yourself when he wasn't the one? And the way you can actually build trust again in your own ability to make successful relationships is, it's very important, when you read my book, you'll see the 50 mistakes that you have made in the relationship, even though your partner probably made 100. doesn't matter. But when you see that you are a part of the problem, and most women don't realize how they train men to be worse and worse and worse, staying with a man, even if he gets angry out loud and yells at you, 
You have to instantly say you're being a bully and walk out of the room. Never engage in an angry man. You have to stop talking. But what happened is you had lots of arguments and fights, and, and that's part, just as much his, his problem as your problem. And when you can see our own mistakes in relationships, then it's easy to forgive our partners because we realize we're not really the victims we think we are. When you have that approach, then you'll have a more neutral attitude when you're dealing with your ex-husband and you don't engage in negativity or trying to change him or feel good through him because you have a life that makes you feel good. So these are all very important aspects. And I do have a whole book on this called Mars and Venus Starting Over. But I still recommend the book uh, Beyond Mars and Venus because it's the most important book to show you the mistakes you make. Because people don't realize the mistakes they make. You know, if you think you're doing the right thing, and most women are trying to do the right thing, they just don't know how to bring out the best in men, particularly when men, men modern men today. Thank you for your call. Okay, Mars and Venus start over. The other one? Yep, Mars and Venus starting over helps you to open your heart again. But the book Beyond Mars and Venus will show you the mistakes you made. Because that's very important that we see that we're not you know, huge victims. Uh, and we all are victims in some sense, but we're also the problem. We have to see ourselves both the victim and the problem. Then it's easy to forgive and let go and move on. Okay. Beyond Mars and Venus. Okay. Bye. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Beyond Mars and Venus. And also Domingas and everybody listening, because I know there's a lot of you listening. We are very grateful to Dr. Gray for offering a free course for everybody listening. And Domingas, go and get this course. Is called How to Get Everything You Want in Relationship for Men, Women, Couple, and Singles. Um, and, and this is all that you want. So to access the course, go to marsvenus.com slash gift. So this is the way you get the course. So this is an amazing opportunity for which we're very grateful to Dr. Gray. Uh, and um, we're going to get to another call, to another, if there is somebody else calling, we're going to get someone else online. But Dr. Gray, you always talk about um, the differences affecting the evolution about our relationship. What are the differences you're talking about? Well, would you be more specific in the question? Uh... Like, like you said, you always said, um, so our, evolu our relationship are evolving. If you look the way relationship were in the past, you know, if you look at our parents, grandparents, and so on. But the relationship are evolving as the time is evolving. <clears throat> what are the differences that we are seeing right now? What, what are the okay. most important yeah. things that we are seeing well, happening right now? What, what we're seeing right now is marriages are falling apart because we mm -hmm. have changed as human beings. We want to experience right. a lasting passion. We want to experience attraction. Right. In my parents' generation, they're actually very harmonious. They stayed together and they loved each other. But it was a, a familiar love, a family love. There wasn't that romantic love. And historically, it, basically, everybody knew okay. that there was a ro there was a hot honeymoon period. That was what we called it, the honeymoon period. And there would be mm -hmm. lots of attraction and whatever. And then that would go away. So your parents would always say, you know, just because you're attracted to somebody doesn't mean they're the right person for you. And mm -hmm. that's still true. Just because you have attraction for them doesn't mean they're the right person. But what's different today is that we can learn new skills that I teach to keep the attraction, to keep the passion, to keep the interest. And right. it's not like every day you feel it, uh, you actually experience it in waves. Uh, women tend to go up and down and feeling uh, romantic and loved and so forth. And then they come back to basic happiness and then back up to this ecstatic state. You go waves of that. That's normal. Now, if you don't have the right skills, that you become more like... Um, mountaintops, you know, you feel really good and you mm -hmm. crash and then you feel hurt and devastated and you go up and you crash and then you lo lose trust for your partner. Meanwhile, how men are different is we tend to be really close. We want to be romantic and loving. And then we ignore right. you and pull away. It's like a rubber band. He gets, he stretches away, then he springs back. And the women think I can't trust love because he's back and forth, back and forth. And so there's skills to understand that journey and process. Uh, like I teach men, two of the biggest mistaken assumptions we have when it comes to maintaining attraction is women assume that men will always be motivated like they were in the beginning. And men assume that women will always be happy about everything like she was in the beginning. This is completely unrealistic, but with skills, we can actually learn, women can learn to say and do certain things that will continue to motivate a man. And men can do, say, and 
do things that will allow women to find her happiness again and again and again. But the nature of life is positive and negative. And it's, it's a more advanced state of maturity where you can experience the negative and the positive at the same time. And for example, right. there's a problem and you also feel confident you have the solution to the problem. That is positive and negative. And we can actually see this in the brain differences or actually mm-hmm. in the brain function of both men and women is that the left prefrontal cortex always sees the positive, says, okay, everything's good. And the right prefrontal cortex looks at everything and says, oh, that's a problem, that's a problem, that's a problem. And the challenge for us is that when our, when our testosterone and estrogen levels go out of balance, which I keep referring back to, the male and female sides of each person, then our stress levels go up. And when stress level, the stress hormone gets produced, cortisol or adrenaline. And at those oh, yeah. times, the prefrontal cortex on the left side becomes, act- on the right side becomes activated. And all we can see is eight times more negative than positive. So for the people listening, if you find your mind just sort of getting stuck looking at negativity, fears, worries, concerns, judgments, resentment, anger, frustrations, and you just keep going back over and over, what's happening is you're, you're creating circuits in your brain so that you have those reactions just become stronger and stronger. It's literally the brain gets addicted to negativity, uh, just like right. the brain would be addicted to cocaine. And they've seen that now right. under MRI scans, people who are very, very unhappy with negative thoughts. They have the same basic brain function of somebody who's taking cocaine. So we can get wow. addicted to positive. We can get addicted to negative. Well, one is to find the balance where we can see problems and address them in a loving way. And that's how we change. And that's the dynamic of good communication skills. And really, we didn't know them. I didn't know them. I had so many challenges in my marriage with Bonnie. I do want to mention that I say it in past tense because Bonnie passed uh, due to cancer three three years ago. But during that time, we grew so much, and that's what I call a soulmate relationship, which I talk about beyond Mars and right. Venus, where you grow in love by facing challenges and overcoming them. There's no perfect relationship, but some people do, like in my parents' generation, because passion wasn't a part of their relationship, eventually they stopped having sex and those things, but they were happy. Uh, they didn't really grow together in intimacy, but they stayed at a comfortable level. But when you face the challenges that that you have to overcome again and again and again to experience lasting romance and passion, you actually grow into love. Whereas at 70 years old, uh, you know, basically I'm integrating my male and female all the time, which means there's massive romance, massive love uh, in my life, more than I've ever experienced before. It just continued to grow and grow into a happier, more fulfilled person. Right. Now, that's great. People don't know how to communicate. The problem is communication, as we know very well. Which of your books uh, uh, teaches communication skills, um, which is more relevant to people knowing not to interrogate and to properly communicate their feelings? And this is one of uh, major issues for a, a lot of couples. Yeah, it, it, communication is and everything. And let, 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 the basic communication skills would be talked about if you're single and you're dating, I have a book called Mars Venus on a Date. And so there's communication skills okay, there so that's for a, single people. Mm, then there's on a date. Beyond Mars and Venus, I think, is a whole new guide for communication. Because there's a, right. there's a, a bias that you have to have. Uh, if you don't understand men and women are different, your communication drops out. Why? Mm-hmm. Because men will tend to, when women are talking about things they're unhappy about, Men will tend to look at it logically and say, well, you shouldn't be upset about that. Well, there's nothing we can do about that, so forget it. Or you're misunderstanding me. And so when what what, what we do is we try as men, these are and women can do this, but more this is something that men have to understand, that negative emotions are transitory. They pass. You don't want to push them down in your partner when she's speaking. We also don't want to push them down within ourselves. But you have to find the right person to talk to. For example, if you've got really a lot of anger at your partner, don't go tell them. You have to tell somebody else. And if you're angry, you can't just stay with just expressing anger. You need to explore other emotions like disappointment because you can't be angry without disappointment. You can't feel uh, anger without fear and concern and worry. And you can't feel any of those three emotions I just mentioned without experiencing some embarrassment and shame or guilt because you're, you're basically being a negative and our goal mm-hmm. is to be positive. The problem with today is, again, with communication, we think that 
we should tell people everything we think and feel, and they should hear it to make them change. And actually, that doesn't change them at all. It's finding the love in your heart and not giving up complaining and instead learning how to request. So here's another example of communication in my books, I would say. Well, here's Bonnie telling me over and over many, many years, you forgot to turn off the light. You forgot. That's called a bit of nagging and complaining. And that was okay. I didn't mind it too much, but I never changed. It was, you always forget to turn off the light. She looked at it with me disapproval and unhappiness. Then one day she changed her communication style and she figured this out. And then I learned from it and taught the world. She came into the kitchen, she smiled at me, and always that makes a man, his testosterone go up, so he's really listening. She's smiling, she's happy. So she said, oh, John, and she's like excited. She says, I've been noticing lately, you've been turning out the light in the living room. And I, I just <laughs> ready to remind you, I love that. And then a brief pause, and then she said, it's not really a big deal, but sometimes you still forget. And then she walked out of the room. Well, I remember that conversation now 20 years later. Because she did it three times, and from that day on, I can I turned out the light, and I every time I turned out the light, I thought, oh, I'm doing something nice for my wife. She'll notice. See, it's 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 the style of communication. Primitive people can only communicate, and when communi- uh, complain, and when complaining doesn't work, then you raise your voice and you complain more and more and more. You tell yourself <laughs> you're not being heard. You can't get what you want. Like a child who can't communicate will just cry and cry and cry. This is our emotions take over us unless we have ways to be heard. And the way you'll be heard is to not express negativity, but to have positivity plus requesting, asking for changes, but not demanding. So a lot of lot of practical communication skills. But most importantly for men, what you have to do is don't diminish, don't push down, don't minimize a woman's emotions, recognize they're transitory if you seek to understand. Where she's from, what her feeling is, they transform back into positive feelings. That's what we learn as therapists, which is just ask, help me understand you better. Talk more. Uh, help, me, help me understand that better. Tell me more and what else. That's a simple way of this following. You do that because a woman is sharing herself and you're not reacting with anger or trying to push her down or, or, or thinking she's nuts, any of those kind of things. Because she feels safe to express herself, her body will make plenty of estrogen, and estrogen will lower her testo- her cortisol levels. Estrogen lowers the stress level in a woman. That then allows her brain to now reflect on, well, there were bad things, but there's also good things. And now she becomes optimistic after seeing what the problem is. Now she can come back mm-hmm. to optimism. And sometimes mm-hmm. optimism is just, hey, it's not a big deal. No need to worry mm-hmm. about it. And give him more love and appreciation. And that's what motivates. Remember, women, you have to motivate men to continue being the guy he was on the date. Men, you have to provide safety and support to allow a woman to come back to the happiness and joy in interacting with you. And because it will go away. It becomes relationships. Women take you for granted. It's just natural. Familiarity sets in taking things for granted. It's like, you know, you to, to increase the romance in a relationship, every counselor will say this which is go on little mini vacations together, go to go to new and different places. That new and different will stimulate the hormones. But my message is way beyond that because that once you've seen the neighboring places, that becomes boring. It's the polarity of a man helping a woman go deeper into her happiness and fulfillment and a woman motivating a man by increasing his testosterone. That's what keeps the passion alive. Right. Now, Dr. Gray, I relate to your story with Bonnie so much because I had a similar story in my life. So I, uh, my husband was my soulmate for, for almost 30 years and he passed uh, of lung cancer. So uh, I have exactly like you, my kids, my family, my work, but I, I need your advice. I don't think I will be ever able in this lifetime to overcome this pain. So do you have any, any advice for me? Oh, yes. How long ago was it? It was 10 years, so longer than Bonnie. Oh, my gosh, you're holding on to it. Yeah, most right. people, I was giving a talk the other day, and they said the pain never goes away. Well, when my brother committed suicide, I learned how to heal. When my father was found dead in the trunk of his car, I heard that on my honeymoon. I learned how to heal it. It takes about a year, nine months. It took me for both of those. Uh, various other tragedies and losses in my life, learning how to heal a broken heart. Each time you do it, you get better at it. But losing Bonnie was more devastating than anything for me. Uh, And 
it's taken three years. It took two years before the pain went away. And now it's sweet, melancholic feelings when I think about her. And I think about her every day. And I'm in a beautiful relationship. It's very important to take away the pain is to be in another relationship where you're depending on someone for love, that kind of love that your partner gave you. You have to replace that love with someone else. But to do that, you have to overcome these three obstacles I'm going to tell you. The first one Mm -hmm. is understanding. Freud gave us this understanding a long time ago. Freud, the the original Western psychologist, father of psychology kind of guy. And what he explained, so many basic ideas that are brilliant, that are foundation, and a lot of, you know, kooky ideas too. But here's one, which is when you bond with somebody and when you start having sex and having a family, having children, you bond with them. And very much the way a child bonds with a parent. I mean, who right. in the world do you get naked with and, and say, I love you? you? That's what children do with their mother and with little babies. So when you do that with an adult, you're bonding. Now, that bonding does chemical reactions in your brain, which change your brain so that we all have a need for love. But when you bond with someone to give you love, then your brain changes and now says, I don't need love. I need that person who gives me love. So if that person mm-hmm. who gives me love, this is all subconscious mind. It's not conscious. It's subconscious mind. If that yeah. person who gives me love is gone, then the brain reacts, the subconscious mac- reacts as if you'll never get love again. And mm-hmm. we all need love. That- so that means I'll never have what I need. That means you lost all your money and you'll never be able to have money again and you'll live on the street. So that's, that's, the, that's the reaction the primitive brain has. And now mm-hmm. you're experiencing this pain. The pain is believing the lie. You see, the, the lie is that I can't have love again. Because that right. person's gone, it doesn't mean you can't have love again. But the subconscious mind thinks that. So you have to detach. You have to let go. Now, the process of letting go is allowing someone else to give you a similar kind of love. But when that person right. gives you a similar kind of love, you, if you even start to feel happy at all, then you feel guilty. The reason you feel guilty, and so you're not motivated to to be happy. Actually, your pain becomes your the acknowledgement that I love Bonnie. Okay, I love Bonnie because Bonnie died, and not having her, I feel pain. I feel unhappy. I feel sad. I feel afraid. It will never go away. I feel guilty for not being the perfect person. You know, if only I'd been a better person then and then and then. So our brain goes through all these basic emotions. Uh, and anger that we have to be alone. These are all different levels of emotion we have to explore during the grieving process, while at the same time we're reaching out and gently, slowly to get more love and support that we got from our partner. So letting go to grab somewhere else. Now, it's hard to grab somewhere else because we don't let ourselves feel really happy. I remember, you know, I would go through my feelings and then, you know, I feel happy again. And then I start to feel happy. I go, whoa, whoa, I can't be happy. Because that would mean I don't love Bonnie. Because the brain is simple. It's a simple yeah. part of the brain. It says, when she died, I feel so much pain and grieving and all that pain and sleeplessness that you went through and I went through and everybody goes through. I felt right. all that pain. And you say, why do I feel pain? Why am I unhappy? Because I love my partner. Because, see, if I didn't love Bonnie, there'd be no pain. It'd be like, okay, you know, wish you well. <laughs> you know, so many people die in the world. I'm not crying every day. But when she died, boy, right. I'm crying. Now, that's because my subconscious mind basically says, I'm unhappy because I love her. So I can't be happy again because if I'm happy, that means I didn't love her. And it doesn't mean that. That's the uh, faulty logic. Right. It's that basically, it's I, the reason I feel so much pain is that my brain is making the mistake of thinking that if I'm happy, I don't love her. And that's just simply a mistake. And somebody asked me a question asked when I was grieving, and they said, John, you're a spiritual person. You believe in heaven. You know Bonnie's in heaven, and she's now out of pain, and she's in a better place. So why aren't you happy? Why aren't you celebrating? I said, I am celebrating because I'm so glad she's out of pain. I'm so glad she's happy. But my subconscious mind thinks that I'll never have love again and wants to go back in time and, and revisit the times and never be in present time again, which is the only place you can truly be happy. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mind game. You have to go through that process. And I, I describe it in great it detail a, in the book, yeah. Mars and Venus Starting Over. You're right. You're right. 
Um, I would love to take another call. I don't know if Julia is still with us on. Uh, is she waiting on the phone, Julia? I love these calls. <laughs> Hello, Julia. Are, still, are you still with us? Okay, because uh, you're so right in everything you say, and I, uh, it's, I, I understand the mechanism, but I have a hard time doing it. No, no, yeah. I get it. That's why you need to look at the exercises. <laughs> See, all this is just knowledge, but you have to put it into action. And so I give people practical exercises to do right. in, in my book, Mars and Venus Starting Over. You truly have to process the pain yeah. that comes up because it's another idea that everybody should understand. It's a more advanced concept. You first have to be able to process your emotions in present time, but then you can start realizing that every emotional upset you have in present time is linked right. to past emotional upsets. So this is another Freudian idea, which is that our past is constantly affecting our present experience. Let's say that you're a little girl and you can't trust your father. He beat your mother or he was mean to your mother or he left your mother and she felt always complaining about him and her life is miserable because he left. So you don't have a very good impression of men. So naturally, when you grow up and some man wants to marry you, you kind of go, I don't, I, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> you see, this is simple logic. Right. The past affects us right. now. The traumas of the past affect us now. This is also the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is always responding to anything that's happening now as if it's back in time. So exactly. those emotions of the past don't just go away until you bring them into the conscious mind and transform them. And you do that by the recognition that when something upsets me in present time, it's only, and I'm very upset, 90% of that upset is something I had experienced as a child growing up or a teenager or a young person in my past. I'm just reliving part of what I'm here feeling now is what I feel now. I just lost someone. I feel alone. I feel sad. Oh, so sad. So alone. That then allows me to go, go back in time and realize that when I was a little boy, I felt so sad and so left out and so excluded and so unimportant and so ignored. And that's, that's, that feeling of the past is making me feel so much pain now because the brain feels all that and thinks it's all about I just lost my wife when really a piece of it, only 10% of it is the loss of your spouse or the loss of your money or the difficult situation you're in. That will be exaggerated by unresolved, they're called unresolved emotions of the past because a child doesn't know what they feel. They don't have the capacity to reflect and know what they feel. They're just not happy. They're, they, they, you could say to a child, are you sad? And then they'll go, oh, yes, I'm sad. Or you could say to them, you know, I say to my grandkids, I say, are you happy? And they go, yes, I'm happy. And you see them <laughs> light up because it's the recognition of what I'm feeling if a parent can see that in the child. But our parents right. could not, didn't know how to process our feelings as children. So these remain unprocessed. You see, right. the brain just stores it as a, as a trauma. And these traumas right. in present time, only 10% of the trauma you're feeling has to do with what's right now. And 90% of it is your past. And it's an opportunity to then go back to your past and love that little person back in the, back when you're a, a child and learn how to, uh, in a sense, reparent the part of you that so didn't true. get the, the perfect parenting. Because mm -hmm. our parents do their we best, but they don't know any of this Somebody stuff. Europe, it, been most waiting people for don't one know hour. this stuff. Hi, Hi Julia, with Dr. Gray. Hi, Julia, can you hear us? Julia? Hello? Hello? Hello, Julia. Can you hear us? Julia? Hello? Hello? Okay, can you get her back so that Dr. Gray can talk to her for a minute? I okay, here. so uh, if, we, if we're supposed to give our listener one last piece of advice, what is the number one piece of advice when it comes to love that you will give everybody today at the end of the show? 
If you find the true love in your life, they will always upset you. They will push buttons inside of you. Don't question that, <laughs> oh, they're not my true love because they're upsetting me. That's the time to take love a it. time out, process your feelings, and realize they're only a part of the problem. Come back with more love. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, my God. Okay, so one second, one one uh, second with Julia, Dr. Gray. Hi, Julia, my dear. You've been waiting for one hour to speak with Dr. J. We have one thirty seconds. What's your question, Hi. Julia, Dr. So, Gray? I'm so honored, first of all, to talk with Dr. John Gray. Um, I feel blessed, and I have a question for for him. Um, I've been single for four years, and somehow a part of me would like to be in a relationship, and the other part would like to be just free and independent. And my question is, how do I shut down that that side of me that wants to be still alone and independent? What can I do about that? Oh, okay. Well, I think both sides of you are very good. Uh, you mm -hmm. should go slow in a relationship. It's good to be independent, and it's good to be de dependent. You want to balance those two things. So you've got both sides of you. Your independent side, that's your male side. Your female side is a part of you wants to be in a relationship. And because you have some fear it won't be successful, you tend to go too far to your male side and you give it more power to be alone. Well, you know, rather than bother, I'd rather just be alone because I can take care of myself. And you can. And that's good that you've got that side of you. Because if somebody hurts you, you can always go back to that part of you that says, well, that's okay. I can be alone for a little while and I'll go find somebody else to love me. But your mm -hmm. female side is the part of you that says, I need support. And I think one of your challenges in relationships, as for most women today, is when they actually find someone to love them, they give back too much. You see, they give a lot of love and they start giving more than they take. So part of what I want you to do when you read Mars Venus, you realize that Mars Venus on a date uh, or Mars Venus beyond Mars Venus, you'll see there are new skills that you can use in a relationship and you try them out. It's a risk. You try them out because they will be different from what you do. And when you try them out, they work. And also, when you take the free class at marsvenus.com forward slash gift, it will give you the step-by-step -step instructions of how you can come back to your female side so it becomes more dominant than your male side. And then the power of your need for relationship will actually motivate you to get in a relationship. And your male side will figure out how to get more in the relationship using new strategies to solve the problems of the past. Wow, thank you so much. I never thought You're like very, that. You're very, very welcome. Don't, don't, don't wait any longer. You deserve to have some man adoring you and loving you. <laughs> and, and, and that's part of what life is about, is for the men and women in this world to come together with greater love. And it's there. We just have to know how to pull it forth. We have to dig it up under the ground, and there's the gold. But it's right in your backyard. <laughs> Thank you so much for the kind words. You're so, so welcome. Uh, this is an amazing advice, Dr. Gray, like always. Uh, so for everybody listening to the show, I want you guys to know that Dr. Gray was kind enough to offer a free course for everybody listening called how to get everything you want in relationship for women, men, couple, and single. Uh, I know that we all want that. So to access the free course, go to marsvenus.com slash gift. So please do it. Don't miss this opportunity because we were so honored to have Dr. Gray with us as my guest of honor, actually. And please visit Dr. Gray's website, marsvenus.com. And you will see all his books, all his seminars, follow him on Facebook, on all the social media. And if you want, you know, to have incredible relationship, Dr. Gray is the number one authority in the world. Dr. Gray, thank you so much. I cannot find enough words to express my gratitude to you. And God bless oh, it's you. Been, it's been a great pleasure. And God bless you, too. Thank you. I love you, Dr. Gray. Love you. You have been listening to Live Now with Dr. Carmen Hara. Heard every Friday.